I want to talk to you about, um, tell us, tell the ladies and gentlemen, Heath, and, and I know it's probably difficult, you can take as much time as you need, tell the ladies and gentlemen exactly what you remember about when you came home on March the 19th, 2024. Um, everything seemed pretty normal, and I came on in, and when I opened the door to the kitchen there, a uh, gun went off in my face before the door was, I don't know, three or four inches wide open. And uh, everything kind of kind of went pretty fast from there. It was a blur. So. Um, I, w I want to take you back just a step. Um, yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, saw a, a bit of a video from inside your house, but just so we're clear, uh, when you say you were coming into the kitchen, I believe there's a, you pull into the garage and there's a door that leads from the garage into the home. Yes. And then there's a little laundry room area. Yes. And then there's another door kind of beside your refrigerator that leads from the laundry room into the kitchen area. Yes. Um, were you in the, were you coming in the first door or the second door when uh, the gun went off? The second door from the laundry room to the kitchen. And do you remember, um, is there anything you do every day when you come in the house? Uh, usually stop and take my shoes off there and uh, come on in and change clothes. Do you remember if you took your shoes off on March the 19th? I, I think I did, yeah. Was it unusual for that second door to be closed in your house? Sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. We would shut that door a lot of times trying to keep the sound of the washer and dryer down or trying to keep one of the dogs out of the garbage can that we had in there. So. I have to do something similar. Y'all have two uh, large dogs, right? Two golden retrievers. Um, and, and so on that day, the second door was what was closed. Yes. Um, I believe you said that you, you didn't get it open probably three or five inches uh, before it went off. Do you, what did you remember seeing, Heath? Uh, just gun flash in my face and uh, then you know, it went off two more times, but my hand was on the gun after the first shot and I twisted it from her. Uh, who who was pointing that gun at you? It was Carly. Uh, who pulled the trigger when you opened the door? The first one I know was Carly. After that, my hand was on the gun too, and I know I had a scratch on my thumb and all. I, I very well could have hit it. I know that third time. Uh, how close, Heath, was that gun to your face when that went off? Uh, maybe a foot. Did the, did you ever get struck by a bullet? Yes, uh, one of them kind of grazed right through this muscle up here. Um, can you tell ladies and gentlemen, what, uh, what did that feel like? I, I know this sounds weird, but I honestly have never felt it to this day. Uh, when, when, the, when the gun went off in your face, tell ladies and gentlemen, I mean, was your, was your body in a state of shock? Uh, not at that moment. Uh, I was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, did you see anybody inside your home other than Carly? No. Walk us through, you said that you were able to at some point get the gun from her. Tell us, Heath, what is it that you remember after that? Um, uh, she was screaming out of her mind scared. Uh, it was like she had seen a demon or something. She was terrified. And my first thought was there was an intruder somewhere and she thought she was after somebody else. Um, and, and to be clear, Carly never told you that she thought somebody else was in the house, right? No, that's the feeling that I got. She was terrified out of her mind. 
And at that time, you did not yet know that your wife was dead, right? No, not at that time. Um, so, so Carly's scared. She's screaming when she shoots at you. Um, how many shots went off from that gun? At that time, there was three. Um, what type of gun was it that you took from Carly? It was my uh, Taurus revolver. And what type of cal uh, what caliber of weapon is that? So the gun is a 357 Magnum, but I think it had uh, 38 special rounds in it. You can, if the gun's a 357, it can also shoot 38s. A little bit lighter recoil. Um, and what color was that gun? Uh, it's just the like gun map silver. Prior to taking it out of Carly's hand, where was the last time you saw that gun? Uh, Ashley kept it on her side of the bed. So it had been there for probably a couple years. When you say on her side of the bed, was it on a nightstand or was it somewhere else? I think she kept it. We had like little cubbies underneath the edge of the bed, the mattress is sitting up on. I think it was sitting up under there. Between the mattress and the cubbies? Like well, underneath I think the mattress? It was just, I think she just had it in a cubby under there. Uh, was the gun just loose or was it in some sort of holster the last time you saw it? I do not recall that. It was a while back. It had been sitting for a long time. Did you have other guns in the house on that day? Yes, uh, I had an old shotgun that I've had for years that's unloaded in the closet and I had an AR that I had gotten un it was also unloaded in the closet. Were there some other guns maybe in a safe too somewhere? There was a Glock in the safe. Oh. There was a BB gun probably in the house somewhere too I don't know. Do you know if Carly knew the location of any of those guns? Um, she probably knew about the two in the closet, but like I said, they were unloaded and the last time I had tried to talk her into shooting, she was too little to even hold them up. They're heavy, big. Um, and you had a, you had several guns in your house. Did you and Ashley ever go shoot guns? Yes, we did. That was something y'all enjoyed doing together? Yes. When you took the gun out of Carly's hand, um, what did you do with the gun? I was holding on to it, and like I said, I, at that time, thought there might be someone else in the house, like an intruder or something, so I immediately started checking the house um, and looking for Ashley. Did you attempt to call Ashley also? I did. Um, I want to take just a step back, Keith. Uh, you, you get the gun from Carly. You said that she was screaming. Um, what did she do next? She fell back into the kitchen island, just kind of straight back onto her butt, and was screaming, jumped up, ran out the back door. And, I mean, I'm still pretty quick and agile. But I knew I couldn't catch her. She was moving so fast. Um, she uh, ran out the back and took off. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to catch her. So I turned around, stepped back in, and I locked the back door behind me. Do you know why you locked the back door? Because I was thinking there might be someone else out and about and around, in or out of the house. So I was went to checking the house. Um. Do you remember telling anybody that you, you know you were in such shock that you didn't even try to shoot Carly back or anything like that? No, it was very evident to me immediately that something was very, very off with Carly. Uh, the way she was screaming, the way she looked, uh, she was moving so fast. So, uh, Heath, you, <clears throat> you said Carly is, is at this point, she's out of the house, she's run off. Um, you never actually saw someone, I mean, other than Carly at the house, right? No. 
So you've locked the back door, you're, you're going through the house, um, you have this firearm still in your hand. At any point, did you open up the firearm? I opened the cylinder on it to check to see if how many had been used or was left in it. I closed it back up and started checking the house. Uh, when you opened it back up, um, did how many uh, live rounds did it appear were left in the gun? Just one. And how many um, rounds does that three fifty seven Magnum revolver hold? It's a seven shot. So you knew that she'd fired. At that point, you knew she'd fired three at or in your direction. Yes. Um, you did not know what the other three had been used for? Correct. Um, the last time you saw that gun were all seven rounds live? Uh, as far as I know, uh, I guess the last time it had been used was a couple years before or sometime when Ashley had shot at some and I assume she had reloaded it. So Heath, you're, you're walking through the house. Um, you have this gun, afraid that maybe there's somebody else in the house. Can You, you said, uh, I believe, that you tried to call Ashley. Yes. Um, did she answer? No. Did you find her phone? I found her phone. Uh, it was on a <coughs> counter in our living room. Um, was there a second phone beside it? Yes. Did you recognize the other phone? I didn't really stop to look. So you, you realize that Ashley's phone is there. Um, walk us through what, what happened next to you. I uh, checked uh, our bedroom, bathroom, closet, other side of the bed, under the desk in there, and turned and started looking, going towards the other end of the house. And I glanced in our spare little third bedroom and then turned and went into Carly's room. And that's where I found Ash. Hey, when you when you found Ashley. Um, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen um, what you saw? She was laying on her back and had her hands kind of across her and um, a, uh, a towel over her face. Do you remember what color the towel was? I do not. Um, he, when, when you saw her laying there, um, what's the very next thing that, that you did? Uh, checked her pulse and see and mm -hmm. kind of moved the towel and then called 911. And Heath, when you moved the towel, um, what did you see? I knew she had been shot. Uh, there was blood around, but I don't really recall exactly where, somewhere in the right side of her face there. Um, you said you called 911? Yes. What did you tell um, the 911 operator it happened? Uh, I tried to immediately tell him and needed the police out that my wife had been killed and I had been shot. Uh, do you remember telling them who had shot you? Uh, I assume I said Carly on there but I don't remember exact details. Um, do you recall telling the 911 operator that, oh my God, she's killed her mother too? I don't recall saying that, but it's very possible, I guess. At that point, Heath, did you think that Carly was the one that had killed her mother? Uh, I didn't know what was going on at that point. I kind of, kind of went into shock there. Um, at, at some point, and, and again, the ladies and gentlemen Heath have, have seen some of the body cam footage from that day, but at some point, someone from the Sheriff's Department does come to your house. Yes. Uh, walk us through what you remember happening uh, once, once he gets there. Uh, I 
don't know much there other than I got out the front door and just laid down on the front porch. And it's and it's pretty safe to say that you were still in a state of shock. Uh, yes. At some point, were you loaded up by the paramedics? Yes. And where did they take you? Uh, it took me to Baptist Hospital ER. And what was the reason for taking you to Baptist Hospital? Uh, they wanted to get me checked out and make sure everything was okay. They, uh, they knew it wasn't, wasn't real bad or anything, so they just trying to be cautious. Uh, but you had, in fact, suffered a gunshot wound. Yes, they got me down to the ER and they put a piece of gauze, taped some gauze on it and sent me back home. And it went through your kind of right, like, trap muscle yes. area? Um, how far, I mean, not to pick on you, you don't look like a very large man. He's yeah. uh, pretty average size. I mean, would you agree with me that where your trap muscle is in your head are about six inches apart? Uh, I guess, yes. Um, so that shot was pretty close to your head? Uh, it was close, yes. Um, you were, the gunshot actually, thank goodness, went kind of through and through, right? Yes. So you didn't require any surgery to remove the projectiles? No. Uh, in fact, Heath, I think you were actually, <coughs> excuse me, I think you were actually released to go home that evening? Yes. They like I said, they taped a piece of gauze on me, and I don't remember them doing a whole lot else. Uh, and the, the night was probably pretty hectic as far as telling people what happened and, and what was going on. Um, at, at any point, did you ever tell anyone that it was someone other than Carly Gregg that had shot you or Ashley? Mm, not that I recall, no ma'am. Um, and, and to this day, you, you've not told anyone that you think that the person that shot you or, or shot Ashley was somebody other than Carly, have you? No. We talked a little bit about law enforcement um, being at the house that night. Um, at, at some point, they uh, kind of released the scene back over to you, right? Yes, I think when I turned back from the ER, they had finished up and cleared out and there was a guy who had me sign a paper uh, and went on back in. Kind of saying the things that they'd taken from the home that night? Uh, yes ma'am. Um, Heath, I mean, you go back home and they've taken some things out, but of course there's still, I mean, clear evidence that a, that a murder had happened there, right? Yes. Um, at, at some point, do you notify law enforcement about the garage camera? Uh, yes, on um, I think it was Friday morning. I was looking through that X, uh, SD card <clears throat> to see if it had caught anything. And of course the cops were looking all around everywhere in the garage for various things and had apparently not seen the camera. And they, uh, found the four videos that you referenced and I called and told them I had found something else and they would come pick it up or whatever and they had still at that time not returned my driver's license to me so they decided to bring that out. Um. And at some point, they did actually get those videos from you? Yes. And um, to be clear, uh, <coughs> there was some confusion about um, an Apple computer and co copying yes. versus I had, cutting. I had Sorry. moved those, picture, those four videos over to my computer and was just going to let them have the card with everything on it. And when I moved them over, it pulled them off the card onto the computer rather than like a copy and paste and making a copy on the mine. So the uh, officers came back in and were talking to me about uh, tampering with evidence and uh, possible charges of messing with evidence even though I called them out there to come get the card. Uh, and he, to be clear, I don't think they ever 
told you they were going to charge you with tampering. They just explained that they didn't want it to look like somebody might have done that, correct? No, he said we're trying to avoid having to charge you with tampering with evidence. Okay. Um, at that point, you're still pretty much in a state of shock, right? Yes, there was four or five of them in my bedroom. Um, and in, in fact, if that was said to you, um, that would certainly not be uh, indicative of, of what you would want to, how you would want to be treated, right? I didn't know. I was just trying to be helpful at that point and figure out what had happened or why. And, and I believe even, even on that day and, and after that, you did uh, still continue to assist law enforcement in the investigation, right? Yes. Um, at some point, you decided that you no longer wanted to communicate with the, the state or law enforcement, right? Yes. After a few things that had happened, I went and got a lawyer.